Let's grade the 2023 Arizona Cardinals season. Coaches, players, all of it. Let's discuss. You are Locked On Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Locked on Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked on AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked on Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button. I'm under 30 away from 3,000 subscribers. Um, Just every year just gets better and better. Uh, Never would have thought, well, that's not true, but it's been a long, fun, tumultuous, uh, stressful, hairline, hairline receding, inducing kind of journey since 2017 due to the, you know, the namesake of this podcast, the Arizona Cardinals. Um, but yeah, it's only going to get better. And like, so I'm going to, let's do, we're going to grade this stuff, players, coaches, I'll pick out some name players, coaches, things like that to kind of put a little bear hug on the 2023 season before we pivot, which this is kind of a weird week. It's like the week between Christmas and New Year's where nobody really knows what day it is and nobody really knows what they're supposed to be doing. And this is talking about just the Arizona Cardinals and content and things like that. It's like, what now? If you listen to my podcast last last week, I discussed this where it was like, when I print out the March Madness bracket, I wait until like Wednesday night to fill out the actual bracket itself. Cause otherwise I'd get too excited too fast. And you know, I, I, I would just get too excited. So I'm kind of, I think I'm going to do my first mock draft next Monday. I think that's the right time for it. And I, I think it's just, you know, with so many things swirling and so many moving parts for all the other teams, playoffs, things like that. It's time to just kind of take a beat, reflect on what we just experienced while watching the Arizona Cardinals in 2023, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, everything in between. And just one thing that should placate all Cardinals fans, well, ones who believe in this new regime, is that they got to deal with this craziness with the coaching carousel that's about to ensue. They're good. They're good. And that's something that with all of the stressors that have been infused in this organization pretty much forever, being able to take a little time and not have to worry about it, even coming off a four and 13 season. It's pretty sweet. So let's pivot to some Cardinals players grades here. Uh, Some are going to be good. Some are going to be bad, but I think one of the biggest positives about the 2023 campaign is that we know, we know, we know what Hollywood Brown is. We know what Rondo Moore is. We know what Greg Dorch is. We know what Trey McBride is. We know what DJ Humphrey is. We, we know what Ajalti Froho, Will Hernandez, and Paris Johnson Jr. are. We know who James Conner is. We know who Kyler Murray is. And what I mean is by production and future with the organization. Now, defensively, a little bit more up in the air, a lot more on the not going to be on the roster next year as opposed to being on the roster. So let's start with defensive grades. Let's start with Kazir White, somebody who, you know, was put on IR to end the season, but throughout the year was the most stable defensive player the Cardinals had by a long shot. Came over from Philly last year at the Super Bowl run. Nick Rowles was his linebackers coach. Jonathan Gannon was his defensive coordinator and now head coach and defensive coordinator Gannon and Rowles here in Arizona. I'll give him a B plus. I mean, what he did was add pseudo stability in what was one of the most non-NFL talent heavy defenses that we've seen in a long time. Just wasn't. And this was all by design. You know, Buda Baker missed a couple games. Uh, 
Garrett Williams was on was on the shelf to start the season. Bijan Ojolari was coming off injury, you know, through the draft, rehabbing throughout through the offseason. And then, you know, they were starting Dennis Gardeck and Zaven Collins and Josh Woods and Jonathan Ledbetter and Lecky Fotu and Dante Stills, a sixth round rookie. Like, you know, what what would you expect? Now, Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson, they'll get a perpetual B plus A minus for me because they have the toughest job on the team. And it's sacrificing their own numbers to fill holes with talentless positions. And that's kind of what it's been the last couple seasons. And then you give the honorable mention, you know, B or B plus to Dante Stills for being the most stable interior defensive lineman the Cardinals had in 2023. That's crazy to me. And then, you know, Dennis Gardeck, Zayvon Collins, C minus, D. Dennis Gardeck is great on special teams. He's a great situational pass rusher, but there's a reason why he hasn't been a starting outside linebacker so far in his career. Great locker room guy, great Arizona Cardinal, all of those things. Hopefully next year they'll just move him back to that situational pass rush role so where, where he can thrive because the pass rush was non-existent pretty much during the second half of the 2023 season, but really in the last month or six weeks. Non-existent. I don't even know if they had a sack in the last six weeks. Not one. Huh? All right, let's go to the offense. Um, James Conner, A-. minus. Hollywood Brown, C-. minus. Greg Dorch, B-. minus. Trey McBride, bona fide A. Paris Johnson Jr., I'll give him that rookie curve. You give him an A minus. He played every damn snap. Okay. Jalti Froll was, I saw a pro football focus ranking where he was top five. I think I'll give um, I don't remember what the what the Twitter handle was who who mentioned me on this. It, it was one from Australia, I believe, uh, who said that Jalti Froll was a top five ranked, top five rated center this year. Will Hernandez played great. So you give them both B's, B pluses. The right side of the offensive line was surprisingly very good this year. Will Hernandez had a, had a rocky start, but I think he's found a home here. I think he's found a home here. And it's interesting with, you know, all of the, the, the Cardinals have like this, this brother fraternity. Yeah. It was it sister fraternity with a, with a sorority and fraternity in college. Like the brother and sister, like they were brother and brother fraternity with uh, with the Giants because it's just like a revolving door of players going from one team to the other. Justin Pugh, namely, started there, came here, went back. Isaiah Simmons is over there. Mason Cole, uh, I think Mason Cole went over there at some point. And then Will Hernandez came here and he's been great. And I think that that's just another gem that they found on a one-year deal that may turn into kind of a Kelvin Beecham situation where he may get a couple more years. And that right side is, is great. So you give them all Bs. I, I think you give uh, Paris Johnson Jr. an A-, a little bump for being a rookie. But the right, right side of the offensive line was great. DJ Humphreys and Elijah Wilkerson, whoever played left guard this year, C-, minus D+. Plus. You hope a speedy recovery for DJ Humphreys, one, one, of the best, one of the best teammates on the field. He was great for a – he was – above average for a large portion of time since being drafted in 2015, I believe. You got to give him credit for that. And then with Kyler Murray, this is the one, you know, I'll take two minutes on this. Um, give him a B plus, A minus. I mean, the curve is for a quarterback is wildly different. And you have to count everything. Coming off ACL injury, not abnormal anymore for a quarterback to do that. So it's not like, oh man, he's like, walking on the moon because, you know, he came off this ACL tour that nobody's come back from. That's not the case. But, you know, he was rocky. I think they won their first game when he came back. They, they won a handful of games when he came back. And that was kind of what you expected. Not the games that they did win in the way that they did win, necessarily. But he came back. After the first couple games, he kind of looked like Kyler Murray. They played two bad rushing defenses the last two games of the year. But – we needed to see that Kyler Murray could still do that against bad defenses. And he did. So at least he didn't struggle. If he would have struggled against Philly's defense, if he would have struggled to run the ball, and if they would have struggled to run the ball against Seattle's 30th or 31st ranked run defense, 
you know something bigger was wrong. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. So I would give Kyler Murray a solid B+. Plus. You didn't need him to be out of this world this year. That that wasn't the, you know, that wasn't the gauge. That wasn't the litmus test that was needed. It was just to see competent football again with an offense that, you know, was kind of devoid of talent. Now, Michael Wilson, another one. Give a B plus to him also. When he played and he got targets, the dude balled out. So the Cardinals can be in pretty good shape for the future, especially training Brian Michael Wilson. I mean, it's like drafting a dynasty lineup here with the Cardinals. They're so young, so many rookies played so many snaps. It's time to pivot. Now, grading coaches. This will be fun. And we'll do that next. We roll on here. Locked on Cardinals. Your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by, wait for it. Yeah, FanDuel. Uh, the season's wrapping up, but that does not mean by any stretch that the action is ending. There's still time to get it on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet, like uh, live same game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays. Uh, if you want to bet the future on who you think is going to win the Super Bowl, you want to take a long shot. You want to take the favorite. FanDuel's got you covered for all of it. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Locked on Cardinals, thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen. Um, it's nice to just be innocent bystanders watching the coaching carousel. And the important thing to discuss on this portion of it is, we don't know if this Jonathan Gannon thing is gonna, it's gonna last for five years, three years. We don't know. All we can do is take the information that is given to us and give an opinion on it. And I think that the 23 season, 2023 season was a rousing success. Would have been better if they didn't beat Philly? I don't know at this point. I think that meant more than, you know, it's such a it, – it is a hair-splitting situation. It's like, well, you, you want to get the win and really show the culmination of the proof of concept that I've discussed every day as you've heard that a million times. Uh, this is your first time listening to Locked on Cardinals. Thank you, first off. Um, and – or the option of, you know, losing that and having the third overall pick. I know the easy thing as well. You know, you lose, you have a third overall pick. But I think seeing James Conner and Kyler Murray and Trey McBride – and Michael Wilson go on the road and win a game against a team that has Super Bowl aspirations this year, I think that's more important. Okay, and then it's like, okay, stop. Because Matt Prater, good on you, bro. Good on you. The, the chance of him missing two field goals back-to-back, -back, I wasn't expecting it. I thought he was going to just drill that, just lace it. Split the uprights as the cool kids say. Cardinals are picking fourth. There's going to be so <laughs> It's so much better that they're picking fourth. I Because, like, here's the thing, and I, I've i been anti-drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. because I know they have so many needs everywhere else that are more important than wide receiver, even though the wide receiver room is terrible. Yes. You don't, you don't draft for need up early. You draft for best player available. Best player available could be Joe Alt. We don't know. Like, yeah, it, it's so arbitrary to say, oh, Marvin Harrison Jr. will 100% be the best player available. We have no idea. We have no idea. But it's good that they're picking for it. Let's just put that out there. It's good they're picking for it. So, uh, coach grades. Let's start with Nick Rowles here. Um, we'll give him a solid B. And this could have been a catastrophic year. New coordinator, youngest defensive coordinator, or youngest coordinator in the NFL, I believe, coming in with a defensive team that's 
pseudo devoid of NFL talent, a lot of practice squad players playing. And that's not a knock on that. Like this is just the transitional year, transitionary year. I'll, I'll figure out which, which one that is. It was transitional transitionary. Um, they didn't do anything for the cornerback room. Marco Wilson got cut. Uh, Garrett Williams was fine when he played, but he was injured when the season started. He's injured when the season ended. Michael Wilson, same thing. That's going to be something that can be problematic if, if that's – and that's been – well, it's been an issue more for Michael Wilson than Garrett Williams in college before, you know, getting drafted. Uh, had no real pass rush. No real experience in the linebacker room aside from Kazir White. I guess you'd say Zayvon Collins. And then you have Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson over the top. Like, what Nick Rollins did to deserve that grade was keep this defense competitive every week. And it sounds cliche, sure. The Cardinals didn't give up a 40-burger much this year, which they very well could have to many teams. They played a very – they played the second toughest schedule in the NFL. And they didn't. And that's coaching. And that's scheme. That's preparation. It's poise. That's something we're not used to seeing from Arizona Cardinals teams the last over the last couple of years, at least as much – and with as much potency as we did in 2023. Drew Petzing gets an A-. minus. Uh, I don't understand the Drew Petzing slander. I don't get it. I don't get it. They can run the ball. They ran the ball when James Conner was out. Not with as much efficiency. But they ran the ball when, Josh, when James Conner was out. He is shown that Kyler Murray can play under center. Don't worry, guys. It's going to be fine. He has an offense that is highlighting the skill position players that the Cardinals have. Luckily, the Cardinals found their tight end for the future, and this is one where he will thrive if Drew Petzing stays around for a while. Now, if he if they have another banger, if they have a banger year next year, you're going to hear my campaign for pay coordinators the amount of money that you pay head coaches and build something. Look at what happens when, when coordinators leave. Teams crumble at times. Maybe just do something different. Not all coordinators are meant to be head coaches. But Drew Petson gets an A-. minus. This is an adult, big boy offense that can eat clock, very few 38-second possessions of three and out, like, like was commonplace over the last 65 games or so before this season. This is an adult big boy offense that Kyler Murray can run and run efficiently. And one that opposing teams have to scheme for and not will just, you know, won't just scoff at when you're throwing go routes on third and two, 25 yards down the field. You just get the first down, move the sticks. It's crazy, crazy, I know. And then Jonathan Gannon, I give him an A. Give him an A. This is one of the most dysfunctional organizations in football. That's not a knock. It's not a slight. It's a fact. This organization doesn't normally do things the right way. Well, what is the right way? There is dysfunction everywhere, and we've seen that. But this is just, and I, <laughs> I am in conversation McKenna you'll get another shout out like uh people on Twitter uh DMs and just comments and stuff uh DM, you know comments here people that have been fans for 30 years are just like well nothing's gonna change I mean this is kind of what it is uh it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy at this point and it doesn't have to be but I understand the hesitancy to kind of open up, this could be good, to kind of open up that back door of the Truman Show. Young Bloods, if you haven't seen the Truman Show, first of all, shame on you. Second of all, you have to watch it to get this to get this uh, reference. You open up the back door and it's like, oh, there's something else. Maybe that's this. Maybe that's this. But Jonathan Gannon came in to a perennially losing organization 
sat down at his, at his introductory press conference and spoke sincerely. It wasn't Steve Wilkes who came in like a politician. It wasn't Cliff Kingsbury who pretty much said, oh, Steve Kime's going to handle all that. He came in in his quirky, eccentric self and just spoke. Week one of, of the preseason, you had your head coach. Didn't look scared. Didn't look out of place. Nick Rallis with his hoodie on, Drew Petzing down there or up in the booth. You know, it, it was up and down, and then, you know, he was down. These guys look ready to roll. They're football dogs. This is what they eat and love and yearn for. And and the the leadership and with the exit interviews and things like that, you know, or the end of season interviews, everybody's like, they've run through a wall for this guy immediately. Kyler Murray, paraphrasing. When he met with the media a couple days or yesterday, it was just like it's just a relief. It feels it, it's just, and nobody is slighting Cliff Kingsbury or Steve Kine, but everybody's saying the same thing without saying it. Thankfully, they're not here anymore, and there is a guy at the head coach position that we trust, that we believe in, and that we'll run through a wall for. Pretty sweet. The final Tankathon Tuesday of the year is next as we roll on here. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Prize Picks. Listen, Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy, man. You don't have to play against the Sharps. You don't have to play against a million other people. It's you versus the projections. You pick two or more players and you pick more or less than their projected stats, you win up to 25 times your cheese. And with the basketball season in full swing, you can now pick combo predictions across football and basketball from the special slate. A league created specifically specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron James and Travis Kelsey, 10.5 projection with three-pointers made and receptions. You pick more or less than that. Um, they offer a reboot policy. So that your entry stays in play, even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games. If you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Locked on Cardinals. Um, thank you, everybody, everydayers, first time listeners today, um, for hanging with me through this surprisingly more positive than expected 2023 season. I mean, going into the season, I was talking to my buddies, and I was like talking with some people in the industry. I'm like, what? how are you going to sugarcoat this throughout the year? How is this going to be? Anything more than, man, I can't wait till 2024. And then week one happened. Hmm. This team's playing tough. And then week two happened. They're going to win a game? They won a game? What is, what is going on here? Um, and then... That's all she wrote. Kyler Murray came back, and the rest of the season was a blur because it was so exciting to watch Kyler Murray back on the field again. And now we sit, thankful, in my seat, for the experience of the 2023 season, experiencing it with you, and um, hopefully it'll get better and better. So the Tankathon Tuesday segment, if you haven't listened to it yet, it's not exactly what you think. Throughout the season, it was pretty much just a barometer check on – where the Cardinals were picking at that during that week, where the Texans were picking during that week, and the teams surrounding them, and you know what could happen, and how many teams were close to moving up, moving down, and things like that. So this is the final one for those that don't know. The Cardinals are picking twenty fourth, or well, the Cardinals are picking fourth, and we don't know where the Texans are picking yet. 
So if the Texans lose in the playoff round, in the first round, they'll be picking 21st. That's what we know. So there's a couple of ways to kind of look at this, all right? Cardinals picking fourth, like what the Arizona Cardinals need. Like to make that pick incredibly valuable, even more than it already is. A couple things. One, and I know that there's going to be a groan here, but um, one is for the Browns, to, the, the Browns, the Bears to take Marvin Harrison Jr. number one. Like if they're sticking with Justin Fields, taking Marvin Harrison Jr. or trading out of that pick would probably be the two things. But if they keep Justin Fields, I would assume that they draft Marvin Harrison Jr. one, even though they don't, you know, whatever. But that probably won't have Justin Fields kind of um, didn't have the greatest week 18 against the Packers. So that could have been just the final straw. So what the Cardinals really need is for a third quarterback to emerge through the draft process, through the combine, through pro day, things like that. Maybe Jaden Daniels. I think that's the guy that would kind of skyrocket up draft boards because if you look, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, uh, Chicago, Washington, New England, top three. And then you have the Giants, Tennessee, and Atlanta. That's six out of the top eight, taking away the Cardinals and the Chargers. The Chargers are picking behind the Cardinals, who could definitely spring and get a quarterback. So if the Cardinals see Caleb Williams go one, Drake may go two, and then Jaden Daniels go three, everything changes. Because then there could be a fourth quarterback that can come up. Like, there's just a bunch of different ways that the Cardinals can go about doing this. Now, I've been anti Marvin Harrison Jr. Not because he's a he could be a transcendent talent. Absolutely, I get it. And I get well, they drafted Larry Fitzgerald. How'd that work out for him? Not great. It was good because he's a top receiver of all time, but they didn't win anything. They made a Super Bowl with arguably the worst roster that ever made the playoffs or that ever made the Super Bowl. And they had a couple good wins, they had a couple good seasons. I just don't know, and that's not a slight on Larry Fitzgerald whatsoever. Just they, they, It's not like they won the division every year because they drafted a wide receiver. That's my point. So when you look at them needing left tackle, pass rush, interior defensive line, corner, probably a running back that they'll get later. Um, like there's so many things that the Cardinals need more than a wide receiver. So – the Cardinals have a couple options there. Like, say say Houston does pick 21. They could draft a wide receiver at 21. And for that, and I've only got two minutes here, luckily, because this could go on forever, like with this, because I'm starting to get excited. Like, I looked at the NCAA tournament bracket a day too early, going back to my um, analogy before. I understand that you can get talent in free agency. 100% understand it. One of the most ballooned entities in free agency that a lot of times yields not so great results is signing free agent tackles and guards to big money. It rarely works. Now, that's not without exception, obviously, but it's the Nate Solder effect, it's the Dwayne Brown effect, uh, effect. Like Corey Lindsley's going to retire. He was a big name a couple years ago. He went with the Chargers. He's going to retire. Like there's spending draft capital on offensive linemen and having them work out is so much more fiscally responsible than going like, well, you have to outbid everybody to go get a left tackle. That you don't know. They've been in the league five or six years. Maybe had a couple injuries. Like rather draft a left tackle. Like, especially with how important the run game is going to be for the Cardinals and protecting Kyler Murray is going to be for the Cardinals. doesn't matter what the receiving core looks like. Kyler Murray doesn't have time to throw the ball. So we're going to talk about this ad nauseum. And I could be talking to like, if the Cardinals draft Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm not going to be upset. Like, it's not like, oh, oh, darn it. You get to cover maybe the best wide receiver we've seen in the last handful of years. Oh, oh, shucks. 
No. But this is a very, very delicate time for this organization. And you just got to hope that Houston loses week in the play. Like, I find myself rooting for CJ Stroud because who cares? They pick 21st, they pick 25th, whatever. This could be a great story if they make it to the AFC Championship game. In a year where nobody knows who can win, anybody can win and nobody, like, everybody's shown their flaws this year. And you have CJ Stroud and Nico Holland just huck it and that defense and they won a Super Bowl as rookie. You're like, that would be wild. Having said that. Kind of hope they lose also. Alex Nancy, Locked on Cardinals. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen. Please go to the YouTube channel. Search Locked on Arizona Cardinals. I'm like 27 away from 3K. I know more of you watch that than this. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on. How about your boy? Alex Nancy, Locked on Cardinals. I'll talk to you tomorrow.